I'm the classic case here. You know, a year and a half ago, I banned all types of social media. I banned cell phones. I was instrumental in the blocking of YouTube. And what happened was I became more educated by chance. And the more I've learned, so it's sort of not saying people, telling people they don't understand. It's sort of more taking the path that, you know what, let me show you how you can effectively utilize this and let you make the decision. That's what I do now. I show my staff. I do not force it upon them. But when you see the students' reactions to environments that effectively integrate these tools, the enthusiasm, the engagement levels are a lot higher. Um, well, we're using various social networking resources in my district. Uh, we have, I have two Twitter accounts. Uh, one is New Milford HS, which is basically the one that my parents primarily utilize for information, news, student achievements, staff innovations. Um, I've actually you know, sent out a pamphlet to them that actually details how to get on Twitter, how to connect it to their cell phone. We're also using Facebook as our main information hub. Um, for again, you know, communication with stakeholders, event calendar, uh, links to our athletic schedules, alumni. It really is just a big resource to share the great news of the things going on in Milford High School. Do you consider SIPA in your social networking policy or is it kind of beyond that and more narrow according to the way your district interprets it? Well, we have certain, when it comes to SIPA, certain, you know, we have a filter. Certain things are blocked on our site. Um, you know, when it comes to certain sites like YouTube, for example, um, you know, it was blocked up until this year. And again, we're sort of like the teachers cried out, you know, why can't we use this? And I hear that, you know, some states, they're not allowed to show Facebook, but there's a plethora of educational related content on there. And I think it's sort of you know, like, you know, talking to your central office and sort of informing your stakeholders how this is going to be used in the classroom. And I think that's, you know, if you, you're given the right guidance and you ask the right questions before diving in, you know, I'm a firm believer you're going to be okay. Why is this so polarizing right now? You know, the, the discrepancy comes from the fact that many people are just not educated on what social networking really is and how it can be used in education. The same can be said about mobile learning devices such as iPods and smartphones. Um, the one side that discourages use and fights against it, they just do not know how to effectively integrate. And what it comes down to is training. Teachers and administrators have to be trained on how to utilize these Web 2.0 tools, social networking, mobile devices. Then after training, you need to have the support. You need to have administrators and teachers that can effectively model integration of these resources and tools in the classroom. And then a lot of it is to see exemplary examples and pass them along. You know, here's what we've done. Here's the feedback from the students. You know, we have to get away from just drilling our stu drilling knowledge into students and creating environments where they create, they discuss, they measure, and they collaborate.